delete Google. You're going to delete all the other online services. Good luck trying to survive as a digital citizen and not have Facebook login. The number of things that are connected to Facebook are just immense. And Facebook. Look at that. You see that my tie here, my tie isn't even on straight. And you can't see this, but there's a piece in my ear where the producer's saying, hey, fix Dennis's tie. It's not on straight. And meanwhile, all the TV cameras are here. You know, this is live in front of three and a half million people. They're asking me difficult questions about, you know, hey, do you think Facebook should be regulated like cigarettes, right? And I'm trying to answer these and it's live. So I don't have an opportunity to answer these questions twice. And some of these are difficult questions. I have friends that are texting me and they're saying, I'm born in the airplane and I looked on TV and I saw that you, you're on CNN, right? Because there's three and a half million people that are watching and they're asking me questions about Facebook and these Facebook executives are saying, hey, Dennis, you can't be saying things like that about Facebook, right? It's making us look bad because of the problems that we're having. Now, if you didn't know who I was, but you saw that CNN invited me to, at, to talk about Facebook and they're asking me questions. And then later they bring in Mark Zuckerberg, right? And then Mark Zuckerberg and I are arguing. You would probably think, wow, this guy must be pretty smart, right? But you see how this is an example of perceived authority? Perceived authority is when people think that you are good, right? So let me ask you in the chat, what is it that you would, what, would, what is it you'd like people to believe that you are good at, whether you're actually good at this or not? Put it in the chat, right? So in this case here, people will think because they see me on TV that I must be good at Facebook ads, right? But in this interview, they have no idea whether I'm actually any good at Facebook ads, but they believe I might be because of perceived authority. So I wanna focus on what are those things that create perceived authority? So what is it that you want to be good at? Okay, so we see management, business, what else? What do you wanna be known for? Social media, very good. Marketing strategy, all right. Marketing, networking, creativity, those are all very good things, right? All things related to digital marketing. And then how about things that are more specific? So I see things, you know, marketing, brand consultation, planning, those are all good. But what about something more specific than that? There we go. Instagram consultant, leadership, my own brand. Okay, good. Now, how then do we build perceived authority? Perceived authority where other people think that you're good at something, the easiest way, of course, is, or the most powerful way is if you're on TV, right? If you're speaking in front of a bunch of people. But, you know, it's not, not many people are going to have that opportunity. So what I want you to do is think about your personal brand and who you are, the topics that you are known for is really not what you have to say about yourself, but what other people have to say. So if we look at the, the, the people that you were associated with, that is what determines your personal brand. And that is what it determines the authority that you have. And most of you guys are not producing 15 second and one minute videos. So you've got to be producing these short little videos. And it could be just like this in a Zoom, we're producing video. Like anytime you're in a meeting, producing video, it can be a a webinar, it can be on your cell phone. It can, there's so many different ways. And don't worry about whether you have perfect English or not, right? I didn't speak English until I was six. Don't, the, the, the thing that's going to help you be a standout digital marketer is that you are producing little videos because otherwise they don't, they don't know who you are. You're just some random person on the other side of the planet. So if you think about what are those things that you want to be known for? So I want to be known for digital marketing. So because of that, I'm associated with people who look, look, I'm wearing my digital marketing partner shirt, right? I'm a certified partner. I'm one of the top instructors, a digital marketer, right? <laughs> and I'm pretty, you see, there's content associated with that. See on the outside of this wheel, this topic wheel. So there's you in the middle, 
you want to expand your business, you want to build your brand, you want to be better known, you want to get more digital marketing jobs, you want to be paid more, you want to expand your agency, all the things you guys said. There's topics that you would like to have known, be known for because of perceived authority, not because you're actually good. Of course, you want to be good at you know branding and social media and all these things. But let's say I'm really good at social media, but I don't have any perceived authority. Let's say I actually am good at social media, but you don't really know. Like all these other people say, hey, I'm good at social media. Oh, I'm good at social media. All these people, everyone here says, I'm really good at social media. Yes, but how do I know you are good at social media? Even if you say you're good at social media, that's the perceived authority. That's the difference we're talking about today, right? Now we're gonna have a fun little exercise. Mm, let's do a vote here in the comments. Let me know if, uh, actually we'll do this. Do you, know, do you guys know who Jake Paul is? Give me, give me a, a yes, no, you know, Jake Paul. If you know who Jake Paul is, then let's see if we have a good number of yeses here. You know, I don't know Jake Paul. Okay, how about Grant Cardone? You guys know who Grant Cardone is? Yes, more people on Grant Cardone. Okay, we'll do a little bit of both. And I'm gonna show you how, how we're building perceived authority. Okay. So let's go to my Facebook here. And you can see we're logged into my Facebook. I've got a blue check mark. The, and then of course the limit on Facebook is 5,000 friends. So I've, there's you know, 4,900 that are here. And you can see I'm making different posts and other people are tagging me, for example. So this guy runs marketing at the Better Business Bureau, which is a big organization in the United States. So this is great, right? Other people are tagging me. Other people here, she's my friend, Dr. Kim Grimes is sharing a video I made, right? That's great. I'll click like on that. And you'll see, right? There's a different post that I'm making. Mm, we have a Black Friday Cyber Monday thing that we just did, right? I'm making videos. I just got my passport last week renewed. That's kind of cool. So I'm sharing stories, right? This is my profile. And you can see that it's all the things that you would see in a profile, but the thing to be able to run ads is you need a public figure page. So that's my profile I was showing you, but a public figure page, this one is a page, business page called Dennis U. So I want you guys to write a note for yourself or do it now. You wanna create a public figure page as your name. Company page is your name, which is not your profile. See this one, right? This is a public figure page, it's a page. And it's got slightly different content, right? But I can run ads against it and all this. And I'll search for these other people that are celebrities that I'm friends with. And I mentioned Grant Cardone because he's one of my favorite ones. So this is an example of how to build perceived authority. So if you interview somebody on Zoom, so by the way, let me know, do you have a podcast? Let me, let me know if you have a podcast in the chat, yes or no. No, okay. Somebody's drawing on the screen. Who's drawing on the screen? You want to disable that. You want to uh, just say that you have a podcast, right? Literally just say you have a podcast. And so you can interview other people. Watch this. I'm like, hey! Hang on a That's second. Rewind this. Hey, guys, Dennis wanted me to send you this. Uh, one best one minute tip. Bro, you got to be authentic. You got to be transparent. You got to give people attention. I'm like, hey! That's one way to get their attention. Now, if you're in a professional setting, uh, it might be more like make it a big claim. Okay. I guarantee you something. You got to punch. You got to have a hook. You got to get excited. So, and let me just say this. All that being said, quantity, quantity beats quality. Don't kid yourself. You got to get out there a lot. Okay. Hey, you guys be great. 10x everything. Think in 10x levels. And... That dude you're working with, oh, oh De Dennis, you, he's a bad, bad man. You see what I do? I keep getting your attention. He's a bad, bad man. And that's my little girl right there. She a freak. <laughs> and that used to be grapefruit on my plate. But he ate it. See what I'm doing? See what I'm doing? All right. So you see what we're doing is. Hey, guys, Dennis wanted me. I've got a Grant Cardone video. It's on my public figure page. And 100,000 people have seen it. 
right? And the reason 100,000 people have seen it is I spent a dollar a day on Facebook promoting this video. What do you think happens in the algorithm when you take Grant Cardone and you target people who like Grant Cardone, right? Grant Cardone content, targeting Grant Cardone, running ads against it. What do you think happens? Or Rishi or other folks, let, let me know. What do you think? You can go ahead and speak up if you like. The engagement rate is super high, right? Because the engagement high is high, because, you know, because the relevancy is high, then more people are going to see it. That's right, more traffic to your page. Yeah, and that means that the, the algorithm, right? You, when you look at Facebook and Twitter and LinkedIn and Instagram and all this, so let's go to my Twitter, it's the same kind of thing, right? I have content on Twitter, the blue check doesn't matter. A lot of people think it means a big difference. Number of followers doesn't necessarily matter, but I'll put content out there. And some of these will do well, some of them won't do as well. And then I'm boosting the stuff out here for a dollar a day so that I can become better known in different areas. So I'm retweeting friends of mine, clients uh, based on topics that I'm gonna be known for. Look, I'm speaking at a conference coming up in a few days. They can't even spell my name correctly. I thought that was funny, right? But if we look here at the insights, analytics on Twitter, I'm not giving you a PowerPoint presentation. I'm showing you, right? You can see, right? So half a million people in the last 28 days have been seeing my posts. Some of these to get more engagement. I see who my top followers are. And I can start to see, you know, who's engaging and what's engaging. And I can see, for example, that, you know, this particular tweet is doing really well. You know, 900 people engaged on it. And why is that? Well, it's a tweet from my friends at SEMrush on how do you do SEO, right? Here's an SEO checklist. People like this so much. So many people are sharing it, right? So I can see the analytics against it, right? So what I would do is I could take this and I could market it to, you know, push it out to the people who like SEMrush or to clients that I have or to the media and to be able to get more exposure. So yeah, it's uh, Gaurav, you said, increases your authority of the domain. It does, yeah. Don't just message me, message everyone so everyone can see. So here what I would do, and this is something that you could do for a client. This is something you can do for yourself. I would run an ad against it. So here, I would come here, create a campaign. And I like to choose engagement, but sometimes you want to use website clicks if there's a landing page. If you want to drive sales on a landing page or drive leads, then you know you would choose the website clicks. But generally, I choose engagement because the, you'll, the greater engagement will drive clicks, but a, at a higher cost per click. And I'm going to call it SEMrush. SEO checklist. This is my ad I'm making. I'm going to spend $1 a day. See, they try to do $100, try to waste my money. And I'll start for 10 days. So I'm spending $10. Then this is the ad group level. It doesn't really matter. I don't auto bid. They always want to waste your money. I'll bid something like 20 cents. And I'm going to target. Now I could target all the people that like SEO and the people that you know, like these various tools or whatnot, but instead I'm doing a follower look alike and I'm gonna start with SEMrush. So there's all these people that like SEMrush. So I'm gonna show SEMrush content to SEMrush as a target. And if I have recommendations, who else? Well, obviously Ahrefs, which is a competitor, right? And if they like Neil Patel, okay. Search Engine Journal. These are people who like to do SEO. Moz, one of the original SEO tools. So you see all of these things that are being suggested are Twitter coming up with these lookalike recommendations, right? So now what I have is I'm targeting SEMrush for a dollar a day, and I'm going to select one of my organic tweets, and I'm going to search for SEMrush. And this could be even last month. This could be here, this one. This one I know, this tweet already did well, right? 
let's see what else it is. There's, a, here's another SEMrush one. GPT-3, let's see. SEMrush is, you know, they, now they're public. NYSE, I own some shares. I'm a, I'm on their customer board. So that's partly <laughs> full disclosure, right? Look, we're doing these webinars together. This could even be a couple of years ago. Look, this is years ago. I have SEMrush content, but I can make another, I can make a video right now on SEMrush. In fact, if I have, let's see, yeah, where is my, where's my phone? This is what happens. Ah, here it is. I'm in New York today. Okay, watch this. All right, got my cell phone. And you guys should do this. Put it on video. And I'll say, uh, what should I say? You know, I'll do this. Uh, I'll do this. I'm gonna stop the share. I'm gonna put you guys all here on gallery. I'm gonna flip it. And I'm gonna say, put it on video here. I'm so honored to be with my friends here, digitalscholar.in. And I guys, I guys want you to say video, put video in the chat so everyone can see it. Type video into the chat because we know the power is making videos, right? When you guys are making videos, video, 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 there you go, right? This is the key to engagement. The algorithm is looking for your engagement, right? You guys are typing in video, love you guys. So I made a video here, right? I'm gonna take that and I'm gonna put it here on Twitter. And I'm gonna say our friends at digital. See, you never see anyone do this before, huh? Never you hear people talk about talk about this. Digital scholar. What is the what, what is the Twitter for you guys? Is it IUP? What is the Twitter for you guys? I need to look. Go back to sharing the screen. Where's your Twitter? Do you guys on Twitter? Give me the Twitter handle. There it is. Digital scholar underscore. Oh, there it is. Yep. Our rocking uh, digital marketing. No, not rocking digital marketing. I need to say something that gets people's names. Are going to make as much money as their US, as our friends in the US. Yeah, okay. And then I'm gonna make it clickbait. So instead of our friends, I'm gonna say, this is how And I'm gonna include the video I just made, it's 28 seconds. And so then I just made this tweet. And then on top of this tweet, I'm going to tag some other people, right? So, okay, let's go back to this campaign. Okay, so I have this one related to SEMrush. Now here's the ad I'm making for a dollar a day. You can see a dollar a day, a manual bid 20 cents. I didn't use their default bid. I'm only using lookalike targeting based on, you know, the, so it's super related, just like Grant Cardone to Grant Cardone. And I chose a couple tweets, but I could choose more. And now I've made a campaign, right? So now I can look at, let's see the tweet I just made. Hopefully it'll post, the video has to upload. So there it is, right? Here's a video we just made. And imagine you, you offer this as a service to clients for social media marketing, right? You wanna drive them high engagement, super easy to do. You make, their, you make video for them or with them, put it on Twitter or Facebook or TikTok or Snapchat, doesn't matter, it's all the same thing, right? 
and you boost it to the related audience here. So let's see, just organically, 18 people have seen this just now, right? Just in the last few seconds. But that's not enough. I want to promote, but I'm not going to hit this promote. I'm going to run it in the ad side. So I'm going to come over here, right? Create campaign. You could do this all day long. It's so easy. Look, watch this. You guys can make money all day long running ads for people. Digitalscholar.in. Now, of course, if we're driving to a landing page or a course or you know something or lead or whatever it might be, you can drive to whatever that is. So I'm going to spend a dollar a day for 10 days. And remember, we said we are going for manual bid. You want to target my friends in India? Let's see. Let's say India, not just the United States. Let's go for India. Okay. So I want to target just the United States. Okay. So now I can target almost anybody on Twitter. So let's digital scholar underscore. Where is it? There we go. This one. Let's see, these are ones that are related to this. Let's see, recommendations. These are people you guys know? I'm sure these are people who are strong as, as Indian digital marketers, right? Let's add a few of them. Okay. I want this audience ideally to be a couple hundred thousand or more. This is a little small, 20,000, but that's okay. If I wanna do micro-targeting in terms of influence, like I wanna get in the media. So the way I got on CNN was, was doing this, by the way, right? Target the media. Okay, now, uh, that because that, that's how people see you, right? If they see you, I can, I can target a very small audience. So now I want people to see this. So I chose this tweet we just made. And now we're done. Dollar a day, targeting the people that I think are super relevant to that particular target. Now I launch a campaign. So if, if I wanna make money as an affiliate, I can just you know, uh, mention someone's course or program and target them. And the relevancy will be very high, right? I can drive sales off of that. So let's see, how is this tweet doing now? So 70 people have seen this tweet, but it, this is all organically. Now that I have an ad running, it's gonna drive more Clicks going to drive more sales. It's building authority, right? So when people know who I am, when people know who your client is, when people know who you are, they are going to be more likely to believe anything that you have to say about that. So then you could set up retargeting audiences against that. So here I can set up, you know, off, off of these hundred thousand people that have seen the video, I can then set an, an ad to learn about one minute videos because I, I told Grant Cardone, hey, you should make a one minute video, right? Tell, tell everyone about why they should make a one minute video because most people are not making the one minute videos, right? Like you guys should be making one minute videos. You guys should be, you know, yourself making one minute videos and then helping clients make one minute videos. Uh, one minute videos of your, your employees, one minute videos of all the, like anything that you want to sell, anyone that you want to promote, you should be making these one minute videos. So then I can take this, you know, so Grant made a one minute video about this and I'm promoting it and I'm selling the one minute video course, right? And people are more likely to buy because they see, oh, Grant, Grant and Dennis are talking about the power of one minute videos. So if we go to search for me, and we look under video, you'll see that I've made a ton of videos, right? All these videos, right? Over and over again, all these different videos. And I can take pieces of these videos and turn them into tweets and blog posts and Facebook posts. And now I can boost it for a dollar a day. I can use them as lead magnets. I can assemble them, anything I've ever said, just out of this webinar, we can cut it into different pieces and pull out different things I've said on different topics, right? Pull out these little pieces of content that are related and then I'm constantly building out my content and building my brand, right? So people talk about personal branding. They, 
mean it in a nebulous kind of way, right? Like you just generally want to be important. And I think about personal branding as you are building your network and you're building your knowledge at the same time. You're building this wheel. Your personal brand is how much content you have here on the outside, who it's tied to, and topically how it relates to something that you have to sell, right? So let me show you on my phone. So this is, I'm using Google Photos where I'm paying $10 a month and everything is automatically being uploaded to Google, right, for my iPhone. So I'm taking pictures. I rode horses a couple of days ago. My friend has a Jeep. He's very crazy. We're playing pool. And we said, whoever loses has to do 100 push-ups. I didn't have to lose, you know. Thank goodness he lost. I was lucky in making these shots. And you can see there's lots of things that I'm doing along the way. And I'm at events, right? I was in Tucson a couple of days ago. I was in Phoenix yesterday. And I'm constantly making 15-second videos. Like here's with my friend, Mark Schaefer. He runs the, the Marketing Companion po podcast, which has millions of views. So he came to my video studio in Las Vegas just a few days ago, right? You can see it shows where it is. Now, name a, I want you guys in the chat, put a city any in the, anywhere in the world, one of your favorite cities, anywhere. Name one. Chennai, what else? Chennai, New York, <laughs> Mumbai. Agra, New York. Okay. I'm in New York today, actually. I'm in New York right now. I'm traveling. I'm going to London in two days. No, tomorrow. Is it tomorrow? I'm going to London. I don't remember. I have to check. So this is New York. This is okay. Yesterday, right? Yesterday, we're in New York. I was in New York again the last month with my friend who is a crypto gazillionaire, right? I'm with Roger Stone. <laughs> Stone, Roger Stone got, you know, here, New York. I was in New York a year ago. With Dr. Oz, you guys know Dr. Oz? And so we're, we're, you know, here's a book, right? We're here promoting a book. But you can see these are things that we're doing in, in New York. And Google has automatically tagged all the photos. So I didn't do anything. Everything on my phone is automatically being uploaded. And it's being organized so that people can see, what is this one? Five second video. See if this plays. That's ridiculous. Probably would be good for a TikTok and with a voiceover. And let's see what else. Here's other things in New York. New York. Um, let's see. Speaking at a conference in New York. Having lunch with the conference organizers. What is it like a $10 million Bugatti Veyron? Have you seen this? I think this guy has a pink diamond. He's does he have like a $20 million pink diamond in his forehead. This is a rapper guy. That's his car, right? So all of this stuff is being, oh, look, these are friends of mine. This guy used to run global marketing for Lego, but now he runs marketing for the Olympics, this guy here. And this is my friend, Kathy. And these guys are, I'm always taking pictures and videos with these other folks just to commemorate it so we can reuse it, right? All these things that are ha happening in New York and it's automatically being categorized. Look at this, right? So this, I'm not showing you this to boast. I'm showing you how the AI is doing the work just like the AI for, for the ads or for, the, for our posts that we make, what's driving engagement, the AI is doing it, right? So let's see how this post is doing from just a few minutes ago. Look. 156 people have seen it. 48 people have watched our video. 34 people have engaged. What do you think is, is driving this, right? What, how, how is Twitter deciding what, what to show in the newsfeed? It's the AI, right? Machine learning. So remember, everything we're doing is about getting the AI to do the work for us. So the AI on Google is categorizing my content. And it's helping me decide what I want to be able to rank for. So I think uh, you guys said London, you know? So here's all these pictures of me. I was, at, I was at Facebook's headquarters in London just over a year ago. Isn't this cool? You guys ever been to the London office? <laughs> they have all these weird sorts of decorations. 
right? There's my buddy who runs the creative shop at, at Facebook. And I'm just commemorating these moments. Having a lot of fun, right? And I make a little video saying, hey, here's what I learned from being at Facebook today. And if this video plays, it always- Hey guys, we're here at Facebook, London, beautiful offices, beautiful food out here. And I just had a meeting with the head of Creative Shop where they're the internal agency at Facebook that helps out different clients. Check it out, they've got multiple floors here in this building. Cafeteria is actually on, on this floor. And what you need to know coming to 2020 is that Facebook- See, so you're just teaching, right? You're just using the in these interesting moments to be able to teach. So it doesn't have to be at Facebook London offices. It could be anywhere, right? It could be with the client that you have. It could be just, you know, you're like here in, in a friend's bedroom, right? I'm staying at a friend's house in a guest bedroom and I'm making a video with you guys here, right? Share your knowledge. Like, for example, what are your best tips for 2020? You could say, here's three things that I want you guys to focus on in 2020. You got to be making one minute videos. Let the AI distribute it and start running ads. Anyone who has a product or service, this is what you need to do. I'm Gaurav Sawant, and I want to be able to help you grow your digital marketing, right? I'm Aditya Jayakumar, and I want to help you because I'm a social media marketing expert, and I know how to do this because I was trained by Dennis Yu, right? And I got Dennis Yu to mention me in the webinar, right? And take any kind, name an activity, you know, eating, skiing, golfing, or name an object like a dog or pizza or something. Name, name something just so I can show you. The power of the AI. Cake. <laughs> cake, okay. There's lots of pictures and videos of cake here. We had cake last night. There's my friend Matthew Janusek. We celebrated his wedding anniversary with his wife in Las Vegas. Here's more cake. All these great places to see cake. Here's, here is putting cake on me, for example, right? Look at this. We have this cake. All right. All right. So what we're gonna do is you're gonna mark it close. Actually, that's noisy. Let's see. Look at all this cake. I love eating cake. Now what? Dogs. Yeah, dogs is a good one too. Watch this. So um, let's see. You guys have never seen this before. This is a free tool to create interactive choose your own adventure kinds of things. And it's completely free. They're gonna start charging sometime next year, but right now it's completely free. And I've been making these things and let's see. Um, let's do, I wanna show you one that I made just for fun. Cause you guys wanna know the future of digital marketing. Check this out. I, I built this, these interactive sequences here only took me a few minutes, but I'll just show you what it looks like. Watch this. You mentioned cake. So you mentioned cake. Uh, here's the cake one, my buddy Mark. Guys, it's wedding season. You want to see me eat this cake? Yes or no? Yes or no? Say yes. Okay. You want to see me eat this cake? Okay, well, yeah, I mean, my little be my pleasure because, you know, not like I'm the one getting married, just enjoying this cake. Mm -hmm. So what do you think? A, B, or C? Do you have Rishi or other folks? Who wants to who wants to come on and help me navigate here? Who else? <laughs> a, okay. They want, want me, to me to give you the cake? Uh, well, what did they choose? Dennis, seriously, what did they choose? This is what they this chose. Is, no, 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 I don't Okay, A or B? Let me know, A or B? Most people said A, okay. Now look what you guys did to him. This is all in the name of interactivity, okay? I wouldn't be doing this if it wasn't for you. This is a special treat. B, okay. You don't get the so then, you know, let's go to our program on how do you do digital marketing, right? Here's how to sell something, right? In case people want the social proof, you know, social media. Okay. Mike Stelzner, founder of Social Media Examiner. 
saying Dennis, you is an amazing person. If you are not familiar with the work of Dennis, what is amazing about Dennis is how much he invests in helping others. He truly believes in serving the community first, constantly giving more than he ever asks. And if you ever get a chance to work with or work for Dennis, I strongly advocate on his behalf. The kinds of things that he is doing to help move this industry forward are the things that- See, so, you know, there's so many different ways that this could turn into a sale, a, a lead. This could turn in, you know, you could drive people to a course that you have. You could drive people to anything that, that you that you have. So imagine any kind of content you've ever produced. You can see we just made this here so easy to make, right? And what I did was I took the sequences here that had cake in them, like with Mark and, and I eating cake. And I thought, you know what? Let's make that into an interactive video. It's personalized, so it gets better engagement. Yeah, that's correct. So think about the future. This is what's going to happen when you can create interactivity out of little snippets of video. Someone earlier I saw in the chat mentioned that you wanna highlight these lightweight moments in these stories, right? So what's something else that you guys care about? What's a topic? What's an activity? What's the thing? Someone said dog. Okay. So all these pictures of dogs and videos of dogs, right? Now I can use this in any of my interactive sequences. Look, I was in, I think this is Alaska with sled dog. No, no, this was at the North Pole. <clears throat> this was North Pole a few years ago. And there are the, these huskies, right? Or this is, a, this is the last piece of land before the North Pole. Because after that, it's just floating pieces of ice. But the last piece of actual land here, these huskies or whatever, these sled dogs, right? Look at this. These dogs, they love the snow. It's so cold outside. Yet these dogs are not cold at all. <laughs> I'm very cold. So these dogs are very excited to go out there, right? So I can I can create anything. I can show people moments of my life involving dogs. Not that I don't know. I wouldn't want to rank on dogs. It's not an SEO thing I want to be able to do. But you can see what is this piece? What is this last piece of land? Oh, let's see. Does it tag? It'll tag it. We look at the details. Oops. Let's see. I think the information. Fall bar. Yep. This is where it is. Fall bar. See, see all this information? It's automatically being tagged. Dark. I don't remember. You guys can't see because it's so dark. You can see that Svalbard. Svalbard is the most northern piece of land before the North Pole. You can see it's, you know, they have information about it. It's very hard to get to. Yeah, you can see. It's actually not even owned by any country because it's so far north, like all these countries have a piece of it. So technically it's illegal to die. It's illegal to be murdered because there's no country that's really in charge of it, right? Sunlight 24 hours a day or darkness 24 hours a day because of the whole Northern sun thing, right? Pretty incredible, huh? Yeah. Okay. Hey, so how are we doing on time? There's lots of stuff I want to show you. There's lots of things I want to give you, but out of respect for where, like, what, what would be the, sorry, our digital scholar folks, what do you think we should cover? And I'm, I'm happy to, to spend more time with you guys. You know, whatever you guys want, I'm here for you. It's, it's a Thanksgiving holiday in the United States. So we have more time today, not a bunch of meetings. But help me understand, what do you guys want to cover? So many things I want to show you. How I got started? Oh, the metaverse? Okay. Okay, those are good questions. So I got started building the website for American Airlines. And I had a mentor who was the CEO. And it was Al Casey. And this was 1997. So this is 24 years ago, almost 25 years ago. So because this guy was the CEO, I was nobody, right? And he gave me an incredible opportunity. And he sat down and he mentored me. And it was in a, you know, a moment like this where I learned from someone else. And I reached out and he said, wow, Dennis, you're you're so smart and bright that you could sell toothpaste. 
you know, you have such a good smile. You could sell toothpaste for the toothpaste, you know, for the toothpaste company for Crest. And because of what happened at American Airlines, where I was making only $36,000 a year, I did a good job building the website. I honored my mentor and the, the web experience I got at American Airlines back then is what landed me a job at Yahoo. So I was one of the early people at Yahoo back in 2000. So just over 20 years ago. And there's me and Jerry Yang and David Philo. David Philo was the richest man in the world under 40 at that point. And you know who the next richest man in the world was under 40 after David Philo? Mark Zuckerberg. <laughs> so this is, this is us at Yahoo. This is when I had hair. Look, isn't that neat? Us at Yahoo way, way back then. And so I learned these, these stories, right? And I learned about how to organize. I learned about you know mentorship and I learned so much. This is how I got started. All it takes is one connection. All it takes is, <clears throat> you know, like you're in a webinar, like right now, and you reach out to other people. You reach out to the speakers. There's, they're normally pretty easy to reach. So if we can see like the tweet that we just made, if you reply on this tweet or if you make a video, then I'll probably reply to you, right? Look, hey, Gaurav, thank you. Midweek learning with Dennis Yu and Facebook marketing. That's cool. I click like on that. <clears throat> What's this one? Gaurav, wow. He's so good. I'm going to follow him. Look, now I'm going to look at Gaurav. See, he's doing exactly what you guys should be doing. You want to find a mentor? Do what Gaurav is doing. He only has 98 followers. Now he has 90. Well, one of them is me. And I say, Gaurav, everyone should follow your example, okay? Right, and what is that example? Engage, make video. Are you making one minute videos, right? That's what I literally was like, as soon as this webinar is over, I'd be making the one minute video, right? Be the smart ass hard worker in the room, sure. Do not focus more on design, but more focus on copy. Okay. Drink responsibly. All right. I don't want to talk about liquor. Let's see what else. Where's his tweets? Okay. So he had one tweet. They're not bad, right? What else do we know about Gaurav? Gaurav's right. Okay. Let's Google him. There's these tweets. What else do we have? India to day is this you Gaurav or another one see people always look you up is this him no this is another Gaurav wow this is a common name huh Gaurav Sarnath. this one has the blue check bar. wow 1.4 million okay not the same Gaurav well you want to rank number one on your name right <laughs> someone searches on your name you know there's an Indian not India. Sorry, there's a there's a Chinese a Hong Kong producer that uh, used to rank on my name, but now I own. If you search on Dennis Yu, now I own the whole thing, right? It's me instead of this guy. He and I were competing, but now I beat him because I've been on on TV more often than him, right? I can search Garav Sawant marketing. Okay, yeah. Well, I want to win on Garav Sawant. So let's see, marketing. You said okay. If you have questions, put them into the chat. Assistant marketing manager, the best digital marketing consultant. Oh, I don't know. I wouldn't say best. I, I think that'd be, that's hard to substantiate. So, oh, look, connection request. I'll accept it, right? Assistant marketing manager. Let's take a look at his LinkedIn, okay? I'm going to be harsh, but all in love, right? Not to be mean. Let's, let's, do, let's audit his LinkedIn because you should, you, you want to grow your business, you've got to be big on LinkedIn. Oh, he's got a thousand followers. Oh, very good. Let's see what he's got. I click on activity and then I click on posts. Let's see what he's got. Oh, he's repurposing content. Remember, we just saw that. Be the smart ass hard worker. Why is smart ass? What is, why you want to be a smart ass, right? Because you want to troll people. Do not focus on energy. Okay, wow. This guy is smart. He is. I wouldn't use the hashtags, by the way. 
I know LinkedIn says use hashtags. I don't believe in using hashtags because it just reveals you as because he's trying to rank on content marketing and all this. Okay. Hmm. This one seems to have gotten more engagement. Why? Maybe because because of this the images here. Okay. What else? He tags somebody to get their opinion. This Reneev person, but looks like Reneev doesn't want to reply, huh? Okay. Okay. Oh, looks like this is working for him. So he he's elevating Falguni, the chief of the first woman-led unicorn, okay, to go public in India. I even I've heard about this. And self-made billion billion her. Okay. 70 people liked it, bunch of comments. Wow. I love seeing my Indian entrepreneur and succeed, right? I am sorry. Okay, why didn't I collect? Well, I can turn this, you know, Gaurav, I would turn this into a blog post. This is so good. I would copy the whole thing and I turn it into a blog post. I would literally just come in here and say, Go to my WordPress. You guys should all have your website, right? Anything that's good that you hear from somebody or that you've said you're gonna repurpose the content, I'm gonna come in here and do a new post. And I could just say, this is a little bit slow here, loading. Hmm. What Gaurav Swant taught me about marketing. Or not say, welcome. Didn't accept your LinkedIn connection request. Okay. Why Gaurav Swant didn't? So good that I shared it here. Go follow him on LinkedIn at go follow him. him. So put a link on it. So there, I'm giving you a link from a high domain rank site. Okay, there it is, and it's publish. Oh, look, that's going to rank on his name now. <laughs> if you search search for Garav Sarant, that's going to that's going to rank. So let's let's take a look further at his profile. What else can we say? So he has a motivational quote here. You can do that, but I'd rather show something that reveals you as a human. So you with someone that you honor, someone that you respect, like a mentor, I'd have a picture of you and someone else, not a quote. Also, this is the most common problem I see in LinkedIn. Notice he put the job title, assistant marketing manager for digital marketing at this one place, marketing monk. Don't do that. No one cares about the job title. This is not a business card. Instead say, I help, small businesses in Mumbai with digital marketing, right? Say, say what you do. Say, uh, I help X achieve Y through Z. So who do you help? I help so-and-so achieve this result via social media marketing, right? So you, you want to, whether you're an employee or you're an entrepreneur, you're an agency, you have to, you want to write this to be relevant to the user. So to me, Let's say, you know, maybe I was looking to hire the marketing monk. This assistant marketing manager doesn't mean anything to me. Tell me what you do. What result do you provide, right? So good. We have six connections. That's important. We have, he has these services that he has. Okay, let's look at his, let's read his about. I like to solve the problem. Okay, good. Intellectual curiosity. Okay. So this is good. So he's like, okay, you know, I'm curious. I want to solve problems. I'm solution oriented. That's not what you want to start with. That's what you're going to put at the bottom. Instead, you're going to start with the things that build authority. You're going to say, I did this and I did this. 
you know, and here's how I did it. So you need to list your achievements. This doesn't say anything to me. This, this doesn't build any perceived authority, right? So this looks like a resume. Okay, with my technical and managerial skills, customer-centric mindfulness, I do marketing content, web banners, social media creative, all this. Okay, now you look like someone on Fiverr. So you need to, you need to tell a story. Tell, like, what's the result? Okay, great. You did a web banner. You did social media. You did some videos. What's the result of it? I want to see that, right? For my restaurant client, I drove them an extra 50,000 rupees, you know, whatever it might be, right? Via doing this particular thing. Oh, okay. So he's listed, he's listed his other accounts here, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, all he's got a blog. Oh, good. Let's take a look at his blog. He should write a blog post on what I learned from, you know, when Dennis Yu trashed me on LinkedIn during a webinar. <laughs> Top 11 free digital marketing tools. Okay. Let's see what's going on here. So Garav is a domain rank six and he has, let's take a look. He's got ranks on six keywords. What do we have Garav? Let's go look at his website. <clears throat> Authority score on SEMrush is the same as the Ahrefs Hmm. You're tra you don't have much traffic coming to this website yet. That's okay. <clears throat> you have a few links. Marketing Monk, Marketing Monk. You want to rank on Marketing Monk, huh? That's why you use that. It's a title. Yeah, okay. Created two months ago. That's why, of course. Hmm. <clears throat> Referring domains. You only have a few pages indexed. All right, let's see what you have, Gaurav. Let's do, uh, do this on your website too, if you don't have a website. Everybody should have a website. He has nine pages on his website. I asked Google, how many web pages does Gaurav have? He has nine, right? His homepage and these other ones. And none of them have any power on them yet. That's okay. But look, he has only, only nine pages of which there's a homepage, contact, the blog, home page he only has really uh, the terms and conditions that doesn't even count so it really has only a couple pages i know it's a brand new site right i can see it's brand new right august 15th august 31 but you guys should have a blog and you should have a ton of pages on it yeah let me know do you have a blog yet let me know in the chat you got a blog yeah yes or no blog yes good okay you should make a blog so easy see I just made this post and I wonder if it'll rank yet, maybe. Let's do a search of the ranks, my blog post ranks here on his name yet. There's his LinkedIn. Oh no, there's another, another garage. It has not, well, my article's not here, here yet. But by tomorrow, you do a search on this, and my blog is good. The blog post I made just now is going to rank, right? And the reason why is that my site has a lot of links to it. And that, that's how you do SEO, by the way. You do SEO by looking at the number of links, by the power of the links. Not the number of links, but the power. So you can see, you know, there's all these keywords that I rank for, right? Okay. What else? Let's see. What, what are the questions you guys have? Let me know. Is blogging important? Yes, it is. Um, I consider, you know, tweeting and posting on Facebook and all this. I consider all of these blogging. These are all different versions of blogging, right? I love Digital Scholar. Yeah. Oh, I didn't follow Digital Scholar. All right. You guys, we should put the stuff on Twitter. Re repurpose it into a web page. Ramia follow Ramia. Let's take a look at Ramia. Busy with all kinds of things. Okay. So instead of this, instead of all kinds of things, just get, get rid of that and say something specific. Okay. So business strategist, digital marketer, content creator, blogger, wife, and a mother. Wow. You are busy with all kinds of things, but 
those are all true that like we're all busy with lots of things but try try saying something that creates authority your pin tweet you should always have a pin tweet should be the one that has the most engagement the one that you want people to see at the top so this is pretty cool i'll retweet this no let's see i'll say thank you thank you Ramia. okay right? You should engage with other people. Really, if you want to get more clients and make more money, you want to grow your business, literally just engage with other people. So you got to, there's a whole bunch of us here live on Facebook and in Zoom. And are you engaging? Are you engaging on this post? Are you connecting with me on LinkedIn? Let's see. I have all these people that are connected. Who's connecting with me? I should see a ton of you guys connecting with me on LinkedIn. I'll, I'll accept all of them. And here's the other thing too. You want to look at my profile and posts that I'm making. So this is a post. Okay. Right. And so people are engaging on this post. I'm engaging back. Right. This is how you're driving business. If we look at the posts that I'm making, so go to your profile, come down here and click on posts and activity and go back here to posts. Look at what I'm doing. All these people are engaging, right? Here's my friend, Kurt Box, right? That's pretty cool. So he's, he's engaging on it too. You can see all the people that are here and commenting. This guy, Kurt Box was playing pool with me at this bar in Tucson. And we decided to make some videos together because he has some interesting stories. Whenever, so whenever you run into someone interesting, pull out your phone like this and make a little video, right? That's what I did. Any, anytime I run across an entrepreneur that's doing something interesting, I'm highlighting them. And I'm also using a microphone. See, look, this one here. Lots of products, anything from, uh, we, oh man, put me on the spot here, Dennis. Uh, surgical eye equipment for cataract surgeries, uh, basically. So he's building his brand by being able to speak clearly about what he's doing well maybe not as clearly there because it's saturday evening just a few days ago but you should be doing the same thing as well right the, the key of you growing your business of you helping clients is you've got to get good at making little videos let's see look you guys are sending me messages hey there's ramia happy to connect here digital scholar session was awesome great so awesome right but you know what I could do even better? <clears throat> Let's see. Saw you in Ad World. We spoke once, one minute video for exchange of some guidance. Okay, run a full time agency. That's great. I think I could even reply here. Let's see. Watch this. So I'm going to come here to my LinkedIn right here on my phone. See, LinkedIn. And I click on messages here. And here with Ramia, I can say, can I do a video here? Can't do a video anymore. Okay. Where is my video with her? Never boring session says, okay, so here, okay. So Cigar says, <clears throat> never boring session. So I'm going to say, Hey, cigar, never boring. And the key is that, you know, better rather than writing text, we are replying with our voice and with our video. So you can see here, right? So I just made this reply. Hey, cigar, never boring. And the key is that. So just reply, reply with the re reply with the video, reply with with something other than just words, because a robot could reply with the words, right? All right, now I wanna show you something ridiculous, just ridiculously amazing. Okay, so this is new tool called Descript. You guys should learn, if any of you guys wanna learn how to do this, or you wanna go through our training or the public training out here, we are hiring for people that know how, who can learn how to use these different tools. I'm gonna to show you what this does. So let's say, I'll just grab one of these, okay. 
So here's a, I, I've done thousands of videos. So we have them all here in this library, right? And there's the video here on the side. And then the bottom here, we have the words so you can hear. Josh, Nelson, and I are going to dip our toes in the cold water of how to do a three-person video. Tip number one, have a clear. So I could also say. And I are going to dip our toes in the cold water of how to do a three-person uh, video. Right Tip here. number one, have a clear strategy. Tip number one, I'm going to change this. I'm going to say tip number one is go follow Ramiya on LinkedIn and um, join the digital scholar group in India. Okay. So now it's going to render this until it turns another color. So right now it's rendering it. It should be ready in a few seconds. So the AI is going to generate things that I didn't actually say because it recognizes my voice. Tip number one. Okay, it's still not there. It's, it takes a few seconds because I put in a few words in here. While we're waiting for this to render, I'm gonna show you something. It's gonna cause you to doubt anything you see in uh, on the internet. So you guys know TikTok and you guys know Tom Cruise, right? Heading down to. Oops. Why is this not? I believe your eyes. If I don't know why it's not working. Tom Cruise. TikTok. There it is. I don't know why that wasn't linking. Okay. So these are, this is all fake. This is not actually Tom Cruise. It's all fake. See? Let's see. Uh, where's the noise here? Okay. Disfrutalmente, no tengo nada de vocabulario y también mi gramática es el peor. ¿Qué tal, TikTok? Hola, estoy aquí en mi granja, en Colorado, en Delhi, right? Mi granja, soy feliz porque tengo muchos anaguitos. So there's other random things here, like this. That's fake. All of this is fake. This is not Tom Cruise. Y'all be right there, Steve. Hey, what's up, TikTok? Look, I do a lot of my own stunts, but I also do a lot of industrial cleanup. Okay, it's important. So uh, obviously you keep your hands clean, but you need that exfoliating product to really cut through the grime. See, this is fake. You know this is fake, right? So put put in fake into the chat if you know what I'm talking about, right? It's fake. It's all deep fake. Yeah. Now we are making things that are fake. This is fake. Let's listen to the fake. Tip number one, go follow Rami on LinkedIn and join the Digital Scholar Group in India while you're making that video. Go See that? Now I can have the AI write all kinds of things in my voice. I can say all, like, right now, I promise you, today is November 24th, 2011. And we are together live on Zoom and on Facebook. But in 2022 or 2023, we don't know whether it's real or not, right? Do you know this is actually me? Is this real or is this fake? Is this deep fake, Dennis? Do you know? Is, is, this, is it possible that this whole thing could be fake and all of you are fake? I don't know, right? So Gaurav says, I lost my chance to be connected because I deleted my social media, but surely be in touch in a week, okay? Yeah. So this is the power of, of social media. This is where things are going is that we're generating lots of video and a lot of the video, you don't know whether it's real or not. So us as marketers, rather than be scared, let's think about how we can use this to our advantage. The 
the post that we just made, let's see how is it doing. 300 people, not bad, right? Gaurav says, but your smile cannot be fake. Even AI comes, AI can fake the smile too. Ishwar says, what is on classical guitar bookmark? Would like to see that article. Oh, I have a bunch of tablature here on classical guitar because I like to, to play classical music here. So there's all kinds of tabs. I can actually read music, believe it or not, right? Look at these different songs and the, they show how to, well, here they have the tab. So tablature is you can just, this is, a guitar has six strings. So it tells you which one, which note to play on each of these strings. And you guys play guitar? Yeah, that's what I have here. You can see all the different things that I have here. Huh, page not found. Okay, well, probably have to fix that bookmark. So given that there's things like, uh, like Descript that will fake my audio, there's other tools that will fake the content. So this is, this is, I'm gonna save the best thing for last. I think you guys will enjoy this. And full disclosure, the people who run this company are good friends of mine. And we've created a lot of training together and I can create content from any type. And I could say, somebody give me a sentence. Give me any kind of sentence to start or any topic. We can write copy, any kind of content. We can write a book, we can write a blog post, you know, food. Yeah. Is Jarvis connected to the Avengers? That's related to that. Yeah. What is the name of the tool? Design. Okay. We've got to be more specific. Help me with a more specific topic. Give me the first sentence to a blog post, something that the AI can continue to write based on, right? Give me the beginning of a story. For example, perfumes. What about perfumes? Give me give more. I need more. The AI needs more. If you don't feed the AI something specific enough, 10 ways to start your morning. Okay. Okay. How to succeed in digital marketing. And let's do it in a tone of voice. So name somebody famous. Somebody you know, Tom Hanks, okay. In the voice of Tom Hanks. All right. So now it's just generating, right? I'm gonna do this. Rather than that, I'm gonna say, um, write a blog post on 10 ways to start your morning and write it. Is that? Okay, see, you look pretty good. So now it's starting. It's writing my blog post for me, the AI. Number one, enjoy a cup of tea. Okay, keep going, compose. In the voice of Tom Hanks, right? So it's generating, all this AI is generating right on the spot. Of course, if I don't like it, I can change it and have it rewrite that item, but it's continuing, right? This is the power of AI. It's the video, it's the audio, it's the words. Get creative with eggs. Look, this, this, I can take this and run it through Copyscape or run it through anything on Google and see that it is not fake content. This is generated content that is unique. The AI is generated for me, right? So I could say, um, let's say 10, what do you guys say? 10 weird foods? It's not plagiarized. It's all unique content. The AI is generating it. It's all based on GPT-3, which is licensed from the OpenAI Foundation. Okay, there's 10 weird foods. Fertilized eggs. You guys ever eat that? <laughs> it's, you know, it could be anything I want. It could be... Hmm, 10 trends for social media marketing 
in 2022, okay? All right. So it's writing. More people will abandon traditional TV, okay? Less time on their phone, but more time on their computer screens. Is that true? Well, maybe. So I, this, I can turn this into a whole book, right? Isn't that cool? Investing in Pinterest, Instagram stories. Yeah, maybe. Okay. You gave me a reason to be a, not to be a content writer. <laughs> That's crazy. Yeah. Well, here, look at this. By the way, don't be afraid of the robot, okay? Look at what the robot can do. It can put it in the IDA framework, PAS, blog post topics, outlines. It can write headlines for me. So if you're in India and you want to make money as a consultant, learn how to use tools like this, and Americans will pay you so much money because it drives more sales. Look, <laughs> Amazon product features, product descriptions, GMB offer, marketing angles, video topics. I mean, does this thing goes on? It writes anything, SEO, titles, right? Bio, real estate listings, residential, Quora answers. This is one of my favorite ones. Okay, guys, name a question. Give me a Quora. Give me a question that you want to answer on Quora. Let's go ahead and type something in just to prove that we're doing this live, right? Go ahead, everyone type something. Type a question in. If you want to learn how to use this tool, we have training. How to brand yourself. Why do you want to become, how AI can help you in marketing. <laughs> have the AI talk about AI, right? How, AI, how can AI help you in marketing? Okay. And I can, of course, <laughs> force Jarvis in here. And let's say generate content. All right, it's going to generate three answers. 2021 business ideas. Okay, that's good. Now watch this output that comes out. Okay. Yeah, here it is. Here's what AI can help you with. AI will be able to generate messages for your clients. Like who likes a company? Pay? Yeah, look at this. It's pretty good. I can turn this into a blog post. I go over here and I literally just make a blog post, right? Or better, this is going to be a little black hat. Let's go to Quora. Let's look at questions that people have. Hmm. What is something too good to be true that actually exists? Nah, I don't want to be known for that. Let's see. Let's go to my alerts here. Alerts. What are habits of highly successful people? Oh, okay. That's a good thing. Someone is asking, what are habits of Highly successful people. Mm. Questions. What are some easy ways to back up your plan? Uh, I don't want to be known for that. I want to be known for, I'm pretty well known for Facebook ad marketing. Let's take a look at marketing on Facebook. Let's see, someone's trying to call me. In the middle of our webinar. All right, but we're, we're not important. Oh, well, half a million people. Fun. Oh, TikTok. Actually, I want to answer questions related. No, no, I don't want to do TikTok because uh, the AI is a little bit behind on TikTok. Let's do social branding. Oh, that's pretty good. Let's see. Best project management tool. That's an ad. Jeff Ferguson. I know him. How can I get my Facebook page back? What's the best time to post on Facebook? John Rampton. No, I don't like these questions. Mm, let's do Facebook. Let's just do general Facebook. Uh, Facebook ads. Let's see. People asking questions about Facebook ads. What is the best guide for targeting? Well, how do we get started with online advertising? Okay, I can answer this one. How do I get started with online advertising? Okay, let's answer. Let's come here and where's the one here? And let's 
not include Jarvis in it. And the tone of voice will make it as me because <laughs> there's enough information on me and the internet that it can figure out how to say something in my voice, right? So now it's generating all this answer. You should start by talking to someone who's doing online advertising. Okay, that's pretty good. Simply talking to others in your niche. Yeah, that's a pretty good answer, but let's see. Uh, I would start by looking at what you're selling. Whether interests, okay, well, that's good. I like this first one better. Let's see this one, answer. Look for a company who's good at social media. Uh, you know what? I would probably take pieces of these ones. So I'll do this one. Okay. And then I'm going to take a little bit of the other answer too. Let's see. Oh, what's it? Um, all right. Too many of these things open. Also, you have to also, you know, tune it. It's fake. Now I've written a blog post. Boom. See? Now I wrote an answer. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Anyway, you see what's going on here, right? So the future of AI is it's hard to tell what is real content, whether those that blog post was written. It's hard to tell, you know, is this TikTok real or not? Okay, just another tip for you talkers. It's fake. It's hard to tell, you know, these interactive experiences. Look, how to make interactive video. Well, you want to click on this? Mark and I are in the studio, and we're going to show you this new tool called Toll Story. And it creates interactive video. And we just drew this up right now. Here's the sequence. It's hard to really tell. Look, this is real. This picture is real. These are real tips. This actually is a picture of me when I had hair with these other folks. We talked about building authority. Oh, thank you, Manish. See, how would we know? Like if, if, if I replied to Manish, like Manish, let's say Manish got this reply from me. And I said, Manish, glad you were in our webinar today, right? What's your goal? How does Manish know whether that's actually me or whether it's a robot replying, right? Because the robot could reply to, is it Qu Quahish, right? Instagram consultant, love your energy in a session today. So I could say, you should join our weekly membership, right? But how does he know whether I wrote that or not? Here's Tushar. What does Tushar says? Keep the inner kid in you alive always. Well, let's see. Let's go to, let's go back. I'm gonna start with something silly. Let's see, creative story. So let's see, just to show you where Tushar. Tushar. Tushar wants to keep his inner kid alive. This guys, give me a help. Um, what else should we say about him? Alive always. What else do we know about Tushar? Executive digital operations at Skanda Media Services in Maharashtra, India. BMM graduate. Oh, okay. Doesn't have anything going on for India or for, for his activity. Okay. But let's just uh, let's just try this. <laughs> we should probably put a little bit more to because you have to feed the AI enough information so it knows where to go. You can't just say content or whatever it is. Tashar was walking down the street when he saw a group of kids playing. He always wanted to keep his inner kid alive, so he went over and joined in on the game. Tashar was a kid at heart, and he didn't want to lose that. He wanted the fun and excitement of his youth to keep going for as long as possible. So in order to stay young and happy, he got himself a job playing in the park with every Every day of the kids who came back to school, no one else was around. I was sitting on the ground drawing pictures with chalk, blah, 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 blah. Right? That's pretty cool. But he became a digital marketer. He became, what is it? What is this, this thing here? 
the executive digital operations. Okay. But he came, he, but he did executive digital operations instead in what city was this? Maharashtra, India. Okay. And let's do it in the tone of, well, let's just try this again. All right. Let's see what happens when we add a little bit more. <clears throat> of course, we can add, you can see up to 600 characters, but we only put in 118. Fine. Okay. We monitored all their digital operations during the day. It's hard work, but satisfying because he knew that by doing so, his children could have something better than what he had grown up in impoverished India with barely enough money to feed himself, let alone provide anything for else for them. So it's, it, the, the AI is trying to find a way to bring these two together, right? Tishar um, traveled, grew up in India. And mm, Tushar was born in, the AI is gonna just start making Marashta. Did I spell that? And traveled all over India as a marketing consultant. Okay. Maharashtra. Okay. Well, I, I know I didn't spell it right. You'll have to forgive me. <laughs> okay. Walked through the crowded streets of Mumbai. He thought back to when he first boarded that plane from Delhi five years before knowing we'd take him. As much as our journeys, this is okay. Smile spread across Tashar's face as he finished his morning cup of coffee. The journey had been long, but worth the trip. Okay. Isn't that neat? Yeah. Sorry, guys, I misspelled Maharashtra. Okay. <laughs> I've never been, but I've been to I've been to Mumbai. I've been to Delhi. I've been to Chandigarh. I haven't been to Pune. There's other places in India that I would love to go visit. But uh, I, I want you guys to be able to grow your brand. I, I want you guys to see that success in digital marketing. Oh, Mumbai is in Maharashtra. Okay, Maharashtra State. See, it shows you how much I know. We're going to create our personal brands by collecting all this content here in this personal brand manager. So on the left side, all this content that's being produced, you making video, other people making video, the AI making video, putting in the central personal brand manager to tell stories and then distributing it out to tweets, websites, stuff like that, that we put ads against it. So when we create, when we know what we stand for, when we produce the assets here in the red, when we edit it and distribute it across these other channels, like I showed you live today, and then we run ads against it. We say, thank you. We use community management. That's the key to digital marketing. And we maintain all these other components. We put it together. So then people know who you are. Right? They know who your client is. You do this for somebody else or do this for yourself or do it for business. Like I can tell you stories of me and Gary Vaynerchuk, right? Or me and Mark Zuckerberg or these other sorts of people, right? But this is really what creates perceived authority. Perceived authority is people want to know that you're, you're authoritative. They want to know that you're knowledgeable, that they can trust you on a particular topic. They want to know that you're fun. They want to, you know, it's like the whole thing with TikTok and whatnot is you have to entertain and educate at the same time, right? Ryan Dice, yeah, Ryan Dice is a good friend of mine. Got a lot of stuff with me and Ryan Dice, right? And so when people see who you're with and they see the topics that you care about that intersect with the topics that these other folks have, then you've got a strong personal brand that's also a strong digital marketing strategy, see? So I could say, I know a lot about social media or digital, but rather than me saying I'm good at digital marketing, or I'm the world's best at digital marketing, you'd never say that because it doesn't have any perceived authority. I got to be able to back it up. I've got to show who am I with. And even if you don't know Caleb Williams or Karen Freeberg or other people, there's other people that are level below that you can certainly say, hey, I'd like to invite you. I'm, I'm Tushar and I would kind of, and I'd like to invite you on my podcast. And I'm doing these five minute lightning rounds talking about this topic. You know, no one's going to de decline you for a five minute, you know, Zoom call. 
which you then turn into an article like you see me do or make it nice, right? So the things you wanna be known for, who are the people that are well-known? Who are the people that are maybe just a step away from that that you could interview? And when you interview other people, share their content, honor them, right? So you guys are connecting with me. I'm accepting these connections. You guys should connect with each other. You guys are, you know, there's already a Facebook group. Let's see, are you guys connecting me here in Facebook? I don't see you guys. Oh, you guys, some of you guys are following me. Let's see what's going on on Twitter. <clears throat> Priyanka, okay. Thank you for the insightful session. You know the best thing to do? There you go, Priyanka. So I'm, we're making content about content. So now I'm going to retweet her. And I'm going to follow her. Now she's got 14 followers, right? We, we should each help each other. So... You know, make literally take out your phone. We're going to be done in a minute. Take out your phone and say, thank you so much, Dig Digital Scholar. I'm learning how to build my brand in an authentic way. And together, our friends in India are going to make as much money as our friends in the United States. You know, whatever it might be. Let's take a look at that tweet that I just made. Like literally, just make a 15-second video, right? Look, this one. See, how's this one doing now? Only 300 people still. Okay, well, I think it's a holiday. Maybe it's not, you know, when the ads start to start to crank up, you'll see more. All right, you guys wanna keep going or I know it's getting late for you. What is it like 9, 9.30 or 10 o'clock? Okay, I see some questions here. How about our, our digital scholar folks? What do you guys think? How are we doing? I'm happy to spend more time with you, answer questions, cover more topics. You guys, a <laughs> million dollar session. So I'm a Tesh, if this is a million dollar session, I want you to tweet that and put it on LinkedIn. Like literally just call out the phone and say, hey, this is a million dollar session I'm learning right now with Dennis Yu. That's it, right? Like literally you could do this, right? Pull out your phone, turn it to video and you could say, my buddy Amitesh just said that this is a million dollar session. And if you guys are loving it, you should definitely share. Love all you guys. I love seeing all the connections that are coming through on LinkedIn, right? This is what happens when you do a good job. And, you know, thank you. Thank you, Pranav, for an insightful session. Thank you for spending time together. And I love seeing all of your faces. I want to see all of your faces here. See, I see Pranav. Sunganda, she, she's combing her hair, making it nice. I don't even have any hair. Aditya, yeah, I see all you guys. I want to see your faces. Divya, there you go. Paul, Maduli, yeah, Hima, there you guys are. Beautiful. See, when you're, when you're all sharing your faces like this, this is how you're going to build your brand. You've got to overcome your fear of how you look. You've got to overcome any of this anxiety you have because this is the difference between See, Priya, now I can see Priya. Priya's got a great smile, right? Yeah, you guys are using your phones. Share these moments. Look, is it Quahish, right? Ramia, I want to see you smile, right? You've got a nice whiteboard in the background. There you go, right? All you guys, when you're sharing your faces, look, bushan has got a cool shirt. Look at that teal striped blue shirt, bluish green aquamarine shirt. You should, so like here, I see Naveen's got a very interesting sort of profile picture, like he's thoughtful in black and white, but it's going to be so much better when we can see your face, right? I want to see all you guys here. So I just made this video just now, and I'm going to turn that into a blog post. But do you, do you think I'm going to be the one turning into a blog post? Let me show you a secret, okay? Show you something almost nobody knows. <coughs> so you can see that I'm producing content. We're here together live. But do you think I'm the one who is editing the video? Do you think I'm the one who's making blog posts out of it? Do you think I'm the one who is editing the content? You know, we're live together. So, you know, we should all be making content. But here's what's, what's powerful is that when this stuff comes into, you know, as what's on my phone, it gets automatically uploaded. You know, it could be dogs. It could be, you know, whatever it is. We have a team of virtual assistants 
that are coming here and editing. So name, uh, name another place in, or uh, another activity or another thing or another kind of food. Somebody put into the chat, but name something. Las Vegas, okay, sure, Aditya. Dubai, we can do Las Vegas too. Dubai, let's do Dubai, okay. So here's pictures of me in Dubai. And this is the, the Burj. It's pretty tall, huh? And then there's, there's pictures and video from the very top of the Burj, right? Look at how tall this is. You guys ever been up here in Dubai? I need to lose weight. Man, look, I'm fat. It's not good. Not good for the pictures. Look, even if you're fat, you should be making pictures, right? And videos. So people can see the before and the after, right? Etihad, one of my favorite airlines. So these are all, th these can be assembled into stories and narrations on, you know, here's 10 things that need to happen in Dubai for digital marketing. Here's why I like to travel to Dubai or whatever it might be. It doesn't have to be travel, but it's the way it, it, it's the system categorizing stories. So I've got all these stories in Las Vegas and like here, I'm on someone's podcast, right? Or I'm taking these cocoon baths, or here's a friend with a crazy truck, or here I'm asking my buddy, Ben Fisher, who's the world's expert in Google My Business, what, what's going on with the trends of Google My Business, right? Google My Business is dead. Why is that, Ben? Google My Business is dead, actually. And now it is what? Uh, you know what? They don't. You see? So these are all, see how there's these little video stories? Now, I don't have time to edit these videos. If you guys want to help and you want to edit some of these videos, I'll pay you. And we have clients. We have hundreds of companies that want to get their videos edited, right? Yeah, what, what happens in Vegas doesn't stay in Vegas, Fatima. It goes all over social media. So this stuff needs to get edited into things in our content factory. You know, the content factory is taking that content, this raw, the raw ingredients, these videos come into the factory. And then we need to turn them into articles and social media snippets and quote cards and post them on Facebook and Twitter and YouTube and blogs and do community management against it. So these are things that we have built this system around. So you can see there's this whole system on how to say thank you, on how to collect this feedback, right? How to do all of this stuff. And this is about repurposing content. See, there's me and Warren Whitlock and we're talking about something. Who knows what we're talking about? Here's Brett Tabke. He's the founder of PubCon, which is the original webmaster world. This is the most powerful SEO conference. So for people that wanna do SEO, this is the guy who started the most powerful SEO conference and here's all these other people at an SEO conference. There's Steve Wiedemann, right? And Steve Wiedemann and, and I are making videos, right? So th there's, there's all these things that you can do. Oh, here's another one. Here's another one, Las Vegas. Look at this. Oh, hi there, friend. This is a Porsche GT3. And I did this just to get your attention. But what I really want to talk about is how do you make one minute videos? And I've seen hundreds of you guys make your one minute videos and then you stop and you have to keep retaking it. The key is just go ahead and make it. If you try to go for perfection, then you're never gonna get it right. So often you have to do things like camera cues for someone who's holding the camera to do things for you. Sometimes you have noise in the background, like here, over there. That's absolutely okay. Because the more authentic you are, what we call flossom, is how people are going to identify. When you capture moments like this is when people get a sense of being on a journey with you. They never really know what you're gonna do. They never really know what's gonna happen next. And one minute videos are capturing stories of these because I'm just gonna try to get into this Lamborghini. Isn't that awesome? And I'd invite you to come join me on this adventure and join other people on your adventure. I'm not even saying the words perfectly. Get over trying to be perfect and just go ahead and start making your one minute videos. See, I'm making one minute videos. So this is, this is a promotion I made for our one minute video course. So we have a course on how to do one minute videos. 
and we need people who can help us promote our training. OMV, which is one minute video, right? So here's our course on making one minute videos. How do you make one minute videos? Examples of making one minute videos, right? So we need people who can help us go through all this kind of content that we have, which we have a ton of content and help us sell our courses, help us produce more training, right? Here, here I did one with a friend, Britton Erickson, and this is on how do you start a digital marketing agency, right? So we've got all this training together on how to do that. And you can see he and I are making pro, you know, promotional videos talking about that. We're educating, but we're also yeah, selling. Be on. Looks like we're live. Awesome, cool. So who are you? I'm Britton Erickson, owner of Elevate Media, and currently one of the, sorry, we start. <laughs> this is the beauty of these short the videos. Of the we short can, videos. We that's right. Talking, right. And my favorite thing to do is a walk and talk. Yeah. So my name is Brent Erickson. I'm the owner of L. So we need to get these things chopped up in different pieces, turned into tweets and Facebook posts and other kinds of stuff and stuff like this, right? That we can then turn into ads. So this is the, the future of digital marketing is taking lots of these little pieces of content, chopping them up, running ads against it, finding out which ones are doing the best and using the drive more sales. And we can do this for anyone, right? This is how we make money together as digital marketers. When we help people collect their content and post it and run ads against it. And you'll see that some of these things on Quora will do really well, right? Some of, some of these things, you never know. Like you can see when I answer a question, sometimes a question or sometimes an answer will, will generate, you know, five people watching it. Sometimes I get thousands of people watching. Sometimes I get a million people that will engage on these different posts. Look at this. What is this guy? See, don't do what this guy's doing. Thank you for adding me. Our clients need help with all these things here. Are you a robot? You didn't personalize. I bet your mass blasting people hoping to get meetings that turn into clients. Oops, I almost said clowns because I'm thinking he's a clown, right? That's not the way to generate sales, right? What a horrible way to do things. Who's this? Sabina. Thank you. Great session with you today in Digital Scholar. Yes, Sabina. Pleasure to connect with you. Keep going. All right? Good job. Entrepreneur at Me Show. Let's take a look at Sabina. We should connect. Third degree connection, 128. Maharashtra. Okay, good. I can't even say this. A Madnagar, is that right? Did I say it right? <laughs> so let, let's connect with each other, right? Make money online. So don't do that. Don't do make money online. Do something where there's where there, it shows a, a, a human connection of you and someone else, right? Don't don't use like these quotes or whatnot, because that's just anything that could be stock art or fake. Don't do that. Make that real. So this is her company, Misho. Let's take a look at Misho. She's been at Misho for a year. Okay. Our mission, democratize internet commerce for everyone. I like that mission, enable 100 million small businesses to succeed online. Wow, <clears throat> 4 million followers. Fastest growing internet commerce company, okay. Oh, so this isn't your company. Oh, you're like a distributor? A lot of people working here, okay. Well, that's cool. All right, so digital scholar, India friends, what, what do you guys think? How are we doing? I know we've gone for over an hour. So it, it is Aditya here or Arishi, are you guys here? What do you guys think? Yeah. I want to know. <laughs> there you are. Yes, I'm here. <laughs> I know it's getting late for you guys. Uh, what, so what do you, go ahead. Yeah, so uh, are you guys enjoying the session? Just let me know in the chat. 
Hey, and just, just for feedback, you know, be honest with me on a scale of one to 10, one, you know, one being completely terrible and 10 being amazing. Let me know, like either, you know, hold your hands up. Let me know. Let me know how many fingers scale of one to 10. And then is it, a, or to put in, yeah, put the number in, you know, what is the number? Is it an eight? Is it a seven? Now is anyone a oh, 100? Wow. You must be a centipede. So if, if anyone is not a 10, then what, help me understand what is missing. Why not, right? Is anyone not a 10? If you're not a 10, if you are not thrilled, if you are not happy, if you didn't learn something about digital marketing, or if you're too confused, I want you to speak up now because I want to make sure that everyone, we're here spending time together to grow you, right? It's not for me. I'm not trying to become famous, right? I'm, I'm here to see you guys succeed, right? Because if anyone is not happy if anyone's confused you should ask your question now right or if there's something that you really need to get an answer on okay about the metaverse metaverse is going to be controlled decentralized it's not going to be facebook facebook changed their name to meta but that doesn't mean they're going to own the metaverse now of course facebook they call their connections friends right but just because your facebook calls their connections friends doesn't mean that they're replacing the idea of friendship we can be friends without being friends on Facebook. We can be in the metaverse without being in Facebook's version of the metaverse. Mark Zuckerberg's not gonna be able to control all our data, but certainly he's going to try. And the metaverse is another attempt to try to own the whole system because he knows that he has problems with Facebook and that's why he's renamed the company. I talked to a whole bunch of executives at Facebook just two days ago about this, which we can't talk about publicly, but they're basically agreeing with what I'm saying. Okay. Confused with data research? Data research is, depends on what you're researching, right? If you clarify your question, I'll give you a little bit more. Uh, Gaurav, I'll give you a little more answer here. Munesh, please share any video link to learn Facebook ads in a better way. Okay, I'll make a special deal for anyone here in, in our Digital India uh, Scholar Friends, uh, Digital Scholar India Friends. If you make a one minute video talking about what you learned today and you put it on LinkedIn, and you tag me, I'll give you our Facebook ads course completely free. Okay. Is that a good deal? You make a one minute video today. I'll give you this course. We charge $189 for it. It's Facebook for a dollar a day. I'm going to give it to you for free, but you have to make a one minute video today. So don't wait until tomorrow. I know it's late at night. Maybe you're tired. You know, I just woke up early for to, to spend time with you guys because you're 12 and a half hours different. I'll give you that training. Because if you don't make, if you're not willing to make video, you're not going to succeed in Facebook marketing. Okay. That's a fact. Yeah. You guys are nodding your heads, right? Gaurav, Pranav, you guys. Yeah. I see that. Yeah. Can we do it tomorrow? No, you got to do it right now because it only takes one minute. It takes you a whole minute to make excuses about it. Can we continue for a few more hours? Wow. Pranav, you are hardcore. I'm willing to continue for a little bit longer, but I, you know, we can do another one too. You guys want to do another one in like a month? I'm going to schedule another time. I apologize. I missed the first half hour. I got, I guess I got, got the time wrong. Right. Okay. So you guys are all having a good time. You guys are all okay. Yeah. Okay. So what, what, what should we do now? All right. So uh, if you guys have any doubts or something, I'll just like uh, give you the chance to like ask them directly to uh, Dennis. So we'll just wave your hand and I'll put you on the spotlight. Okay, so does anyone of you have any doubts? Just like wave your hand and put you on the spotlight. Well, it looks like Gaurav has uh, his hand raised. Yeah, sure. Okay. You can unmute yourself. Hi, Dennis. Actually, hey, I, I just, hey, yeah, actually, I'm finding difficulty into finding the people account who are liking the particular jewelry topic or something that is related to my product. I mean, I get the MD's number and director's numbers of startups and all the enterprises from Zoom Info and other websites. I get their contacts. But I just want to target them on Instagram or especially on LinkedIn. 
so i just want to do that research so is there any tool that can give me the list of the people i mean direct list in which i can you know clearly define that this is a startup or this is a sme by actually looking at their followers number and having what kind of data they are sharing or something like that for list building i think the best approach is going to be using linkedin and there's other tools that will scrape LinkedIn for data. I don't recommend doing that. On the ad side, I like Clearbit. I think they're absolutely fantastic. You should follow Alex Berman, who has the latest on how to build lists by the size of the company, by the interests that they have, by the kind of employees and, and all of that. But you should follow yeah, Alex Berman. Okay. Fact, Actually, I'm in London. Actually, I just want to know, like, if uh, I want to target the, like, for the list, I'll have, you know, email marketing and all of that going on. But for the ads, I'll have my social media ads. But I just want to handpick the people who are taking interest. Like, I have the contact number, I have their emails, but I want to approach them on Instagram. And I cannot find them because by name, there are a whole list of names. I cannot figure out who yeah. the person is. Don't, don't do that. on Like, you don't want to target them that way on social media because that, that can be intrusive. So the, the I'll point. don't target with them the messages. I'll target them, you know, by just showing content and they will not know that I'm targeting them. That's how I want to target them. I mean, they you should come to me. I don't want to go to them. Right. You want to do inbound marketing. So you want to sell digital. What, what are you trying to sell here? What's your goal? Uh, actually, it's B2B. I, I'm a jewelry manufacturer. So I just want to, you know, do B2B with the companies or the owner of the companies. I don't want to target them even with the mails. I want to target them with social media and they should not know that they are being targeted in that way. Yeah. When you, when you put out content and you micro target, they don't know the targeting that you're using. Everything that we teach yeah. in Facebook for dollar day, like targeting the media. So when I'm on, when I'm on CNN, for example, I will take that and I will target the people who work at the New York times or the wall street journal or whatnot. And they don't know that they're being targeted. The beauty with LinkedIn targeting is they don't know. I mean, it's just, plus LinkedIn so expensive. So if you know the, the companies you want to target and you run it inside the ad system, yeah, put content featuring related uh, uh, clients, show behind the scenes stuff, you know, talk about who you are and that's what's going to drive the inbound connection. Okay, okay. And is there any feature by which I can, you know, target on Instagram and they should not know that if they're being targeted? On Instagram, uh, Instagram, you're going to have to go through Facebook Business Manager and choose Instagram as the and that, Then they yeah. will be written as sponsored. But that's fine. Yeah. People don't realize it's an ad. And the, the, the targeting realize. comes oh. through the advertising. Yeah, all, all the micro-targeting comes through the ad system. Just like I was showing you when I made ads, right? Like I made ads on Twitter or whatever. It comes through the ad system. I can't micro-target organically. Like the, the systems, the social media networks are designed so that for you, you to be a B, you have to use the dollar a day approach to target because it's in the advertising system. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So okay you thank take you. Our, take our advertising course. You should make. Yeah, I'm, a, I'm a just one posting video. one minute video. <laughs> yeah, there you go. And I see Munesh has recorded his one minute video. Fantastic. Yeah. yeah but you've got. I'm to, just yeah, recording it. it. Yeah, you got to post it on on LinkedIn or okay, Facebook okay. if you want. But better post on LinkedIn. I am on LinkedIn only. Okay. And then when you're when you've okay. made that one minute video and you've posted it, send that URL to Stephanie. So I want you to do this, right? I just put it in the chat here. Send it to Stephanie. Send the link, not don't send the raw video. Send the link to your post that has video to Stephanie and ask for your okay. course and mention digital India. Or sorry, digital scholar in the subject line. Okay. 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 All right. Okay. Thank you. All right. Let's move to Pinelli. Thank you, Gaurav. Okay, okay. Oh, I didn't put it in the chat here. I put it just to oh, everybody. Okay, hang on. Thank you. Thank Go you ahead. very much for your valuable insights uh, about this social media industry. Dennis, you, we are very indebted to you for sharing your valuable wisdom. Thank you. Uh, I have a question for you, Dennis. Is there any age bar for uh, moving ahead in a social media industry? That means uh, 
in social media domain? Is there any age bar? Age bar. That age bar, bar is it? Uh, as in like like age like being older or younger? Yes, 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 yes. You know, so, social media is now so prevalent that people of every age is, is there. So a lot of people think, well, TikTok is only for kids. But people said that about Facebook 15 years ago. And now the average age on Facebook is over 40 because our parents, right? Or people of parental age are on Facebook. So, you know, there's, when, there's all the different social networks that have different demographics associated with them. But don't think because maybe you're older that you can't do social media. Don't think that because you don't sing and dance or because you don't, you're not an attractive woman that you can't do social media. I just turned 47, right? I'm not the big bodybuilder, entrepreneur, like successful kind of like, you know, sports cars. Okay, I made some, I made videos within sports cars just, just to make fun, right? But every one of us can succeed on social media because <clears throat> it's not only the young adults that are the influencers, right? This, this, this idea of the influencer is gonna go away in a couple of years and it's gonna give rise to the idea of a creator <clears throat> and a personal brand. And all of us, like Penelope, you wanna reach other people that are like you who think, you know what? I cannot be like this 18 year old girl who's taking pictures of my food all the time. So there's no bar. It, I have friends who are 80 years old that are on social media and they're doing very well and they're doing consulting and they're helping other people that are 80 years old be able to cope with their businesses on social media and train up other people. So ideally you want to train up other people that are like you because people identify with you, Pinelli, unlike identifying with someone else, you know? So Hina has a completely different audience than I do as Pinelli. So we want to be able to reach our audience and don't think that just because someone else has made a video or made a training or provides a service for a particular audience that you can't provide that to because there'll be people, Pinelli, that resonate with you, right? Thank you, thank you. You're never too old, right? I feel like I'm just getting started. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Thank you. Thank you, Pinelli. Hina, how are you? Hi, I'm very good, thank you. How are you, Dennis? Thank you for the amazing session. Thank you. Uh, I have a question. You said uh, you should make one minute videos. So it should be related to our niche as beginners because you know we're not famous. So not everybody would be interested in our one minute uh, general videos. You'd be surprised. So don't, don't think that people won't be interested in what you have to say. You can post content on anything that you find interesting. I remember I was in, I was in Puerto Rico a few months ago and I saw a pineapple. Did you know pineapples grow on the ground? I thought pineapples grew on these large trees and I thought, wow, this is so interesting. Mm -hmm. And I made a one minute video. I said, wow, do you know this is a pineapple? And you know, why would anyone think that's interesting? Like, why would anyone care about me showing what a pineapple looks like? but it blew up, right? A lot of people engaged on it. And it's not that you have to go viral all the time, but I wouldn't assume that people, because you're not well-known or because you're not famous or because you're not with celebrities, that people are not gonna care about your content. You'd really be surprised. You just gotta put it out there. And the more practice you get, the more you're going to see that people will engage with you. People that you, you didn't even know were fans of yours. You're gonna build a community because you're going to encourage all these other people to connect where otherwise there's, there's so many people that are watching, but they're not engaging. So Hina, I would ask you, what are you making content about? And what, what is your goal? Oh, you're on mute. I can't hear you. Okay, now can you hear me? Yes. Uh, so basically I am into uh, manufacturing of uh, imitation jewelry. And uh, sometimes I uh, do branding for my own brand. I make short videos of, you know, maybe wearing a piece of jewelry or uh, with a friend who's used my jewelry or stuff like that. Fantastic. And you know, jewelry, it's not even necessarily the jewelry itself. It's who's using it. It's the story behind it. It's how it goes with other kinds of clothes and different situations that you wear different jewelry in. I'm not a woman, but I've worked with a lot of jewelry manufacturers. And it's telling the story. So you're elevating 
these clients, right? When they're using jewelry in these different situations and you're telling their story. So you, if you show them, not because they're trying to feature the jewelry, but you highlight them as a person, you can be interviewing all these people, Hina, and then use that on your Instagram and Facebook and YouTube and Snapchat, and TikTok and all of this, right? Are, how are you doing against that? Right. And then you run ads so, against uh, it. We just, sorry? Yeah, and then you run ads against it. Right. So we have just begun. Uh, it's like just been two years. Uh, so that's why I started the digital marketing course to just enhance maybe uh, my appearance uh, and sales, of course. Yeah. But highlight the, you want to, so you're selling physical product, but the key to selling that, the, the key to getting conversion is you want to highlight emotionally how people feel when they're wearing the jewelry and why they feel that way. And that's, that's why people buy when you get to the heart. So don't make the common mistake of other manufacturers where they just talk about the product features and how it looks in the pictures and how it's made. And that's great. You can talk about what it's made of and this you know, gold and diamonds and all this, but what really causes people to buy is the story. They, they see other stories of other people that are like them talking about a wedding or taking the husband out to dinner, or they went to this business meeting and they're wearing this necklace or how these pearl earrings, they go with this particular kind of dress in this kind of situation. So like the tips, right? That kind of stuff, that's what's gonna resonate. And it doesn't have to be, in fact, it shouldn't be with the, the famous you know, models or people like that, ordinary people, you would be surprised. And then yourself, right? I'm not saying you're an ordinary person, but people yeah. will connect with you and they're gonna trust people who they feel they're closer to than a celebrity, a celebrity, is obviously being paid. Like any Bollywood celebrity, they're obviously being paid to endorse that product, right? So there's not really trust there. It's a great, great advice, Dennis. Thank you. Never thought about it that way. But yeah, an emotional connect uh, will I'm sure definitely make a difference. So Hina, I want you to implement this. I want you to go through our one-minute video course and the $1 a day on Facebook. And I want you to report back in one month on how you're doing, okay? Let, sure, let me know sure. how you do it. I want to see you do it. I know it'll work. The question is whether you go through the steps or not. You know, it's like I give you a plan on how to get, you know, big muscles and I know the plan works, <laughs> but if you don't work out, it's not going to work, right? Yeah, okay, right, so right. No, I'm definitely one, going to take the course. Go to the training, but then you yeah, we know yeah. the training works because we've done this for many, many years. Thousands of people have gone through it, but I want I want you to hold yourself accountable. And, and each of you here, I want you to find a partner, an accountability partner. So each of you, you know, together, you go through the course. Maybe it's three of you or four of you. Find, you know, small groups together and then hold, like meet weekly. If you're not doing that already and hold yourself accountable to go through the different steps. Because we, we find that the reason people fail is that they don't, you know, they, they start or they get excited. You know, right now you're excited, but it's late. Right? And then tomorrow you get busy and all of a sudden get busy and you forget about what we talked about. And so you never take action. So I want just the biggest thing is I want to see people take action. If there's a way where we can get our, you know, a detail, if we can get people together and maybe as part of the Facebook group or maybe an email list, I want people to, to form into small groups like Hina, you know, maybe there's a, a, all the other people that are doing manufacturing or with products or doing e-com can put into a group all the people that are new in digital marketing in one group, all the people that are doing consulting in another group, right? And the different, all the people that are agencies in one group, all the people starting a business in one group and hold each other accountable. That's what I'd really like to see. There'd, there'd be uh, nothing that would make me happier than to see you guys actually follow through with the stuff that we're teaching. I know this stuff, you know, I can entertain you. I can show you all the new things that are happening in the future, which is interesting, but I'm afraid if I go too far into all these cool things you'll end up treating this like a movie or a youtube instead of the whole point we're here is that you're going to implement right okay so is that good hina all right you're amazing hey manish how are yes, you doing yes, my thank friend? you so much <laughs> manish you're on mute Hello. 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 Hello, Daniel. Thank you. 
first and foremost i would like to say thanks and uh, thanks for your valuable time uh, my question is uh, could you please tell me little more about uh, how you started your journey i had a mentor i attended a session like this uh, where i was in a group and i and there were a lot of people in the group but i reached out to Al Casey, who is an important person, right? He was a, the CEO of an airline. And, uh, you know, millions of people potentially could have reached out to him, but I was one of the few that did. And I asked for help and I followed his advice. And he told me the books to read and he gave me advice, which I shared. And that's what opened the doors for me to be able to get my first real job opportunity, like at American Airlines, where I built the website. And that introduced me to a lot of other people because the more I built a, a reputation as a good apprentice, as someone who is trustworthy, young, but trustworthy. This is when, this is 25 years ago. I was much younger. I had a lot of hair you could see. And, but I built the reputation as, as someone who is young and trustworthy and who is bright and would, even though I didn't have any knowledge, even though I didn't have any experience, I worked very hard to follow through on the instructions that I was given. And because of that, that opened up other doors. My mentor introduced me to other people who then you know, hired me to build websites for them. And those people, I did a good job building websites for those people, which then introduced me to other people. And pretty soon I became known as the guy who was very good at building websites. And anytime, you know, anyone in this network, someone wanted a website, oh, go see Dennis. Dennis will build your website, right? So it built good word of mouth. And so that's what, that's what you want to do, Manish, and everyone else here, right? Suganda, I see that you're nodding, right? Everyone here, yeah. Hey, Verenda, how are you doing? So it's when you're, you're building that connection and you, re, re, you reinforce that connection because you engage on their content, you follow through. That's why I, I gave out these exercises. I want to see who is actually going to make a one-minute video. Like there's all these reasons why you're not going to make a one-minute video, right? Most of, look at the screen here and look at how many people have their camera turned on versus how many people have the camera turned off. The people who have the camera turned off are not really paying attention. They think they are, but they're not really. And maybe if they're listening, maybe they're, you know, jogging or maybe it's late at night or they're, they're you know, they don't want to show themselves because they're tired or all this. That's the very reason why they're not going to make the video. You have to be willing to get out there, even if, you're not the most beautiful that you are today because maybe tomorrow you're going to be more beautiful. Don't worry about how you look or sound, right? Just doesn't matter if your background is this, you know, the, like Madhu has this plain white wall. Priyanka, you have this green plain wall. I, I have a very plain, you know, this, this is just a random bedroom I'm in, right? Doesn't matter. But it was, it was a mentor that opened the door for me. That's how I got the initial experience. I always followed through and did a good job. Because I knew that in order for me to be able to advance my career, I needed somebody important who would say something good about me. And if I'm not well known, I could go on and on about how good I think I am. No one's going to listen to me. I need someone important to say, Dennis is the one. He built my website. He should build your website. Oh, you need a website? Look, Dennis built me a website. Right? So that's how I got started almost 30 years ago. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Manish. Madhu, you have your hand raised. You're on mute. Or who else after Madhu? You have a question? I'll hang around a little bit longer. Yeah, Shoban, you have your hand up. Go ahead. Anyone, anyone just go ahead and unmute. Whoever's first. Yeah, just go ahead and unmute. Can you not unmute? Oh, Verenda. Hi, Dennis. How are you? Good. It was an amazing session. Learned a really a lot of things which I had no clue earlier. So I just had a couple of things to ask. You suggested a few uh, content creating uh, websites, right? Like Harvest AI. and So how does that actually work? So when we search something, does it take one word in that and build content around it? Or see, basically why I'm asking is I want to know the relevance of why, what I am searching 
and how what kind of blog i can write or what yeah. is my target audience and what is my niche that i'm writing for so how yeah. does that actually work and how can we change it according to our requirements yeah so there's two parts to your question let's start with the first one on what is your goal what do you what is success for you virenda uh making someone's life meaningful making someone's life meaningful and adding and, value to them to their life okay so let's how do we be more specific uh, say I help a, small, a lot of uh, small businesses to go online to okay. get more uh, content for them, to create more content, to get more customers for them, to drive more sales, all of that. Okay. More specific than, than small business, a particular type of small business? Uh, say uh, a bakery or a boutique. Okay. And do you have some examples of bakeries that you've done this for? No, I have not done this before. Who, who have you done this for that you can feature as an example? No, I have, have, I have, no, see, this is in terms of digital marketing, I have not done anything as much except for uh, Instagram and uh, Facebook marketing. Those are the only two things that I have done till now. So now okay. that when I have enrolled in this course, I'm learning a lot of things okay. and slowly building my uh, skills. Okay, so you've done some Facebook and Instagram marketing. Yes. And you want to start an agency helping bakeries and boutiques. With yeah. their in marketing. Okay. Yeah, that's an example. Yes, correct. So then in order to sell services, which is what a lot of us are doing, we have to have enough knowledge to create the perceived authority. So people see, oh, Verenda is someone of all the millions of people. Like think about how many people are providing marketing services to small business. A lot, right? Right. So you have to stand out to be, then you have to stand out by being specific, which is niche like. So and let's say, are these where are these these bakeries and boutiques? See, basically, these are uh, tier two and uh, three cities. See, the, the thing with India is there are a lot okay. of digital agencies in tier one cities and and the metros. Okay. But when it comes to tier two and three, there is there is the market is huge. So here, people have no idea of how to go online and what to do, all of that. Okay, okay good. So then. I would write, I would use these AI tools to write articles like how bakeries in such and such small city can go online in 2022, right? Or how boutiques in tier three cities, of course, name the cities, right? You name a particular city, you know, in Pune or whatever the city is, right? Can, can go online or can succeed with Facebook or can whatever. So show how the particular type of business can achieve a particular kind of result, right? Through a particular method, that three-part component is what we call the X, Y, Z method. So you can create dozens of articles around that. You can use the AI to generate it, like I showed you through Jarvis. I have a link if you guys want. And there's a free trial. Here's the, here's the I put it in here. But more important than generating content around that is you wanna show video. And if you don't have any customers already, then the best thing is just to get your first customer. And if you have to give it away for free or offer it very cheaply to get your first customer, that's what's going to give you 10 more of the same thing, right? Because then you can demonstrate you've done it for one bakery. Then you could say, here's the story of how this one bakery through my 10 step method or five steps or whatever you want to use, name something. We usually like to use six steps and it seems to work very well, the number of steps right? Because it's not too many, but it's not too few. Six steps, you know, just name it. You're, you're, what, give it an acronym, right? Some process generated this, you know, this bakery got more, not only got online, but they got more customers where they were able to sell more croissants on Tuesday morning or how this particular dosa took off on Instagram, you know, whatever it might be, something, some, tell a bunch of specific ex stories based on your example or make a post on Facebook or Instagram or Twitter or whatever saying, hey, I, I need, you know, I joined this course. I need my first client. I'm going to do a very good job and feature you. And the reason why I'm going to do a very good job is because I'm going to use your example to get more bakeries, more boutiques, more, you know, the exact customer that you want. And the catch 22 is if you don't have an example that you've done this with, it's very hard to get other people to agree to want to give you money unless they've seen that you've done that before successfully many times, right? See, Gaurav is nodding on that. We had the same issue too, where, you know, I wanted to do a lot of stuff with sports teams. So I, I had a friend who's the 
chief marketing officer of the Golden State Warriors, which is a basketball team. So we did their marketing for five and a half years and we did a very good job. First year, we spent a million dollars, drove $38 million in sales off of Facebook and Instagram and Google. And that caused other sports teams to want to work with us because they saw the example of what we already did. If you don't have an example, you need to do everything you can to try to get that first amazing example. And it's, it's not hard to get that first. You just need to get one, right? Just one, do a good job, document how. And as you're documenting how you're doing it, that is your marketing to get more clients. No, right now I'm I'm actually working with a couple of uh, fitness clubs, and uh, one cafe, and uh, for a couple of FMCG companies as well. We design. Okay, that's too many. You want to choose one. Choose okay. one type, because a fitness club and a cafe and an FMCG those are all very different. You're basically running four or five different businesses. Okay. So no, I would... basically we were providing marketing services for them. They approached us. They okay. approached us and asked us for how they can uh, uh, build a better social media presence and all of that. So we are we are helping them. Okay, I guess, well, maybe in tier two and tier three cities, you can do that. It, okay. I know in the United States where it's very competitive, okay. if, you're, if you're relatively new, you have to start by choosing a niche and just dominating one niche. Because the, the classic problem we see in the United States, and we coach thousands of agencies in the United States, is that they do a little bit of everything. You know, they have the cafe, the bakery, the real estate agent, the manufacturer, the jewelry. The, and so every one of these businesses is different. Uh, correct. I picked, I picked the one that you, you've done the best job at, right? And document exactly how you did that. Make a bunch of videos around it. Interview the founder. Build a course around it. Just make lots and lots and lots and lots of content so that, that it's very obvious that, you know, if I go to Google now, search, that this is the best way that a bakery in a small city in India is going to succeed. Here's the recipe, right? I'd even call that, I, I would call it the, the cookbook. I call it, Vir, you know, Virendra's cookbook for bakeries, just to, you know, the play on the, whatever it is, right? Or if it's, if it's gyms and fitness centers, right? The, the, you know, your digital health, right? In 2022, 10, 10 steps to, you know, your fitness program, your digital fitness program, you know, whatever it might be, right? But you've got, if you don't niche down, you can't focus your content down. And then your marketing efforts end up being, you want to help everyone on the planet. And you do not want to try to help that. Like that's a big mission and all that. But if it's just you and a small team, you need to focus on something. And then you're, the key to growth is to start small, is the niche. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks for your Okay, Garav, you have your hand up. All oh, right. No, still talking with somebody. All right. Anyone else? So this is the last question we can have. So right. since time. Okay, last okay. question. Yeah. How about, let's take Shoban. Yeah, hi, name? Denise. I'm very glad to uh, have you in the session. And, uh, you know, like the, my question is not only for me, this is for the everyone who are, uh, who are taking the digital marketing as a career and those who are switching over the career from their uh, whomever is working there because as I'm working in as a HR and admin uh, in an MNC so I want to switch over my career entirely to the digital marketing so that's the reason I, I have joined so from the day one uh, after joining with the uh, digital marketer marketing roles so I'm unable to cope up with the assignments whatever they're giving based on my my workload is like that so because you know like now it is up to 11 o'clock at 12 o'clock I will work and once again morning I need to go to uh, my office then uh, I will yeah. be back by 8 o'clock or something like that. So yeah. uh, the people like me, uh, you know, like uh, I'm a professional. So like me, what is your advice to how to switch over my the things to uh, for the digital and obviously I'm, I'm a very pressure. I'm like a very pressure for the digital. So I need to step by step I need to uh, build my skill. So what is your advice? Yeah, that is a great question, Shoban. I'm glad you asked it. It's one of those powerful questions I think we could have today. I get the same thing too, right? There's so many things that, that we're doing. And if you're a, a professional, but at the same time, you also want to be learning these other skills or engage in other efforts and be growing yourself. I call that learn, do, teach. 
right? Think about these three buckets of learning, doing, and teaching. And the doing is what you have for your day job, right? That as a professional, you have to provide income, you have to pay your bills. So I like to spend part of my time doing that, but I have to spend enough time learning so that I'm always keeping current, always investing in myself. And I have to be teaching, which is also growing my brand and putting stuff into practice. So if I spend all my time doing, then eventually my skills will go stale. So if, if I think about the balance, ideally the balance should be one third in each learning, doing, and teaching. Like the time I'm spending with you guys here for Digital Scholar, this is something I'm doing because it's a passion of mine. It's not, um, it's, that's not how we make money, right? We make money off of courses and off of taking care of our clients. But I'm doing this because I've, I've find a way to build in time to be able to teach. So when you have the issue of overwhelm, where there's too many things going on, where you're working and you don't get home until six, and now you have to spend time studying, you're going through a course, there's lots of things that you need to do. Then the risk is that you end up trying to do too many things. And you know, you go to bed at you know 1 a.m., 2 a.m., then you got to wake up early, you didn't get enough sleep, and now you're not doing well at your job, but you're also behind in the course. So the, the way that that's the issue you're talking about, right? Being overwhelmed, trying to do too many things at the same time. With digital marketing, pick one thing, one simple objective, right? Just like when people have a fitness goal, right? Oh, I want to lose weight. I want to drink more water. I want to have a better diet. I want to run five miles a day. I want like, you can't do all those things. Like pick one thing at a time and you'll be surprised at how fast you're going to grow in digital marketing. And if you were to pick one thing, Shoban, or anyone else here, Pick making 15 second videos, literally with this, right? This, this happens to be the new Apple iPhone, iPhone 13 Pro Max, but you do not need the most modern phone to make videos. But I would say as part of your everyday life, you know, maybe you go to the market on the weekend or whatever, just make 15 second videos. That's the, if I only had a few minutes a day to practice digital marketing, and if I was new, that's what I would focus on doing is practicing, making 15 second videos of just narrating what's going on, of interviewing other people, right? Of being able to tell stories, of being comfortable speaking on the camera. Because when you learn to do that, that will help you in any aspect of digital marketing. That'll help you when you are working with clients or when you're an entrepreneur or you're doing a webinar or you're doing anything. But it's being able, being able to speak clearly is, is the most important skill in digital marketing. So hopefully that helps, right? Yeah, and spend less time learning. Like I love hanging out with you guys, but less time learning and more time making video. So if you only have an hour a day because you're busy and whatnot, then spend it in, spend more of the time in making, in practice, in actually making video than in just watching other people because you can waste hours and hours in YouTube and courses and things like that. But there's nothing, there's nothing more powerful than learning how to make videos, practicing. Okay. All right, you guys are amazing. I love spending time with you. I'd love to schedule another time, ideally with everyone, you know, getting in some practice, making the short form videos, talking, learn. If you're watching this later on the replay, Make a video now, tag me in it, you know, post on LinkedIn, post on Instagram or on Twitter, right? The key is that you've got to learn to communicate through these short videos to be able to connect with everybody else. And that's how you're going to grow your business, even if you're brand new in digital marketing. In fact, that's the best way to grow if you're brand new. Thank you guys so much. Love, love spending time with you. So thanks a lot, Dennis, for enlightening us with this knowledge. Today's event was full of interesting things, it gave deep insights into the topic, and also revealed some interesting facts. I'm pretty sure the precious knowledge that uh, Dennis gave us will definitely help us in empowering our digital growth. If you all love the session, just comment awesome below and spread some love to Dennis. You guys are all awesome. Thanks a lot, Dennis. Yeah. So you can Thank see you the chat. Yeah. <laughs> All right, we'll take care, everybody. Keep in touch. I'm following sure, sure, you sure. on all the socials. Sure, please keep in touch. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.